Hi guys, it's Emma and welcome to Art by Emma. So today I'm out shopping in Home Bargains and I'm gonna, which I guess would be the equivalent to your uh, Dollar Tree, um, Dollar Stores maybe, but everything's not a pound or a dollar. It's, a, but it's, it's quite cheap and interesting. So I'm gonna buy some stuff, some craft supplies and some stuff to paint on and, um, and create a video for you. So uh, come with us. uniform bag so I bought an assortment of things um, some craft kits and some things that I can paint on and create with so uh, let's have a delve into my bag Ooh. so the first thing I bought is a design your own t-shirt now in this is a, um, a child's t-shirt so I don't think I'll be modeling it when I've done it but um, let's see what we can do um, I think I'll probably do this as a kit review, so that'll be um, a video coming up, no doubt. And I paint your own bird's house. Now I've already got an idea for this one, um, and I will be doing it that in this week's video. Um, so it won't be a kit review. I may use some of the paints inside there, but I'm definitely going to use the little wooden bird's house because I have a little idea in my head for that. So what's next in my bag? I have a stepping stone, mould and paint your own stepping stone. So I'm expecting there's going to be um, some plaster of Paris and stuff in there. So we're going to have fun with that one. Do, do, do. I just bought this little tray because I thought it would be um, handy just for keeping stuff in on my desk, maybe some art supplies, pens or whatever I might be using so we're gonna we're gonna spruce this one up a little bit and also in my little baggy bag I have some canvases because painting on canvases is always fun and a sofa tray now this one I bought it I thought maybe 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 I could just use it as a table like this but they're spring loaded so I guess oh, no, no. The idea is to put the legs over the arm of your sofa. Let's get the other one out. We're gonna have a finger off. It's like a mousetrap. So put the legs over the arms of your sofa. No, it won't stay up. Will it stay up? No, it won't stay up. Put the put the arms over the no. Put the legs over the arm of your sofa, and it holds on. And you can put your cup of tea and your biscuits on there if you're watching TV. But I thought it was a bit plain, quite white. So that one could do with um, with sprucing up as well. So I put all of this to the side, and like I said, the one I'm going to be working on is the paint your own bird's house, and um, I've got an idea for this. So uh, let's get into it. So here's my little bird's house, and first things first, we need to uh, open the box, get in there, and get all the little components out. Um, I don't think we'll be using the paint or the paintbrush, but here's the uh, bird house that we have to begin to build. So simple enough, the sides and the front and the back slot into the base and then the roof slots onto the front and the back and the sides, just like that. And the frame is complete. So this little bird house is not going to stay a bird house for much longer. I'm going to turn it into a teeny tiny fairy house. So to begin with, I've, I've picked this bark up from the floor of my local park. I didn't take it from the trees or anything like that. And I'm gonna 
tile my fairy house roof with little tiny pieces of bark. So my glue gun hasn't been used for a little while and uh, there must be a bit of a blockage because the glue was being a bit reluctant to come out. But with a bit of pushing and squeezing and, and the heat getting through it's, it's flowing quite nicely now. So I'm going to attach these pieces of bark as tiles onto the fairy house roof. Um, I'm doing this in rows and lines so they slightly overlap and um, seems to be going okay so far. And the fairies have always been a bit of a, a theme, a bit of an obsession through my life from a, from a child to an adult. I've always collected um, fairy figurines and um, paraphernalia but I've never had a fairy garden and uh, making this fairy house has uh, given me the inspiration to uh, maybe go further with this project and uh, in future videos maybe I'll be making a fairy garden or even a fairy village to situate my little house in. So the tiling of this roof is, uh, is going rather smoothly so far. Um, I've forgotten how much I enjoy working with a glue gun, even though I've burnt my fingers copious times and end up having to peel off loads of dry glue, but it does the job and um, it's doing its job here. And there's the last piece for this side going in place and there's my wonderfully smooth transition and the other, the other side of the roof is completed. So now onto the sides. I've decided to um, make it into a kind of a log cabin type fairy house, much like um, Laura Ingalls' house off of the Little House on the Prairie. So again, quite a basic, simple technique, cutting the little twigs into size and um, hot gluing them in place. And yet another cheap and um, simple activity that anybody can do, children, adults, whatever takes your fancy. Um, the house itself was only a couple of pounds from Home Bargains, nice and cheap. And um, the, the natural part of it, the natural ingredients, the twigs, the bark and pine cones, absolutely free, just find them lying around. There wasn't a lot of planning that went into this. I kind of had the idea in my head as soon as I saw the little house and um, I ran with it. And as I start with the other side of the house, um, I'm beginning to think to myself that maybe I should have painted the house before I started putting the twigs, etc. onto it because um, obviously they're natural, they're not gonna lie straight next to each other and there's, there's a few gaps showing through. So maybe if I painted it brown or a similar colour to the twigs, that wouldn't have been an issue. So uh, I did debate about painting over the twigs after I had um, stuck them on, but you're going to take away from the, the naturalness of it. So spoiler alert, I, um, I do do a little bit of painting on this house, not a lot, a little bit, so you'll have to stay tuned to see what and where I do paint. So just to add a little bit of detail, a little bit of interest, um, I've decided to add a little window to the side of the house. Now, um, I don't know if it's just me, but as a child we always drew windows like this, just a, a rectangle or a square with a cross through it. Um, and that's what I've done here, that's the design I've used here, but thinking about it, when have you ever seen a window that looks like this in real life? And here I am filling in the uh, non-window parts of the wall of this house with twigs to again give it that log cabin effect. So just cutting and gluing the uh, last few pieces for this side of the uh, fairy house. Um, it's a little bit fiddly, a little bit burny on the fingers but I just need to take more care. And um, I'm adding some some little twigs to the side there just to fill in the gaps that I couldn't get covered. So swiftly onto the front of the fairy house and um, I found a beautiful piece of bark that resembles the shape of the fairy doll that I made in a, in a previous video. So I'm gluing that onto the front um, to, to make a fairy doll. I'm wondering how I can frame it but nothing seems to be working so I'm going to continue as I did around the window, just uh, layering up the twigs for that log cabin effect again, up the sides and um, around the top. Mm -hmm. 
so the intention is with this as it was with my uh, fairy dories to pop it out in the garden but I get very connected I get very protective of my creations and and I don't like to think of them outside by themselves alone so no doubt this one will stay inside with me so you get the gist of what I'm doing here up one side of the door with the logs up the other side and then finish off the top another nice smooth transition so the front is finished and now we're moving on to the back So first of all when I started the back I was just going to have a plain, a plain back just sticks all the way up through as I have on one side of the house but um, you'll notice later in the video that I do add some shutters. So here we are snipping or snapping the branches to make them fit and gluing them into place. Obviously some of them won't snap or, or be cut in the place where I exactly need them to. It's not an exact science, it's a bit higgledy piggledy but um, I guess it adds to the effect. And there's me adding on my shutters. I've, um, I've got some of the bark and I've cut them into rectangle shapes and just pop them on as shutters um, to give my little fairy a little bit of privacy and um, adding a window frame around them. So just finishing with some um, small pieces of twigs up the side, either side of the window and then um, I'll be finishing along the top also. So I've learned from experience to not be touching the glue when it's hot and wet and I'm using my, um, my scissors and um, little pieces of sticks to uh, manoeuvre the, the twigs into place as I'm, I'm layering them up. So the overall effect is looking quite good I feel um, but still thinking that um, prior preparation I should have painted the house beforehand so uh, if you're going to attempt this project if you're going to do it yourself at home learn from my haste and uh, make some preparation before you start and here's the last few pieces going into place um, I've slowed down the video here just to normal speed so you can see how how slow and time consuming and um, yeah how it can get um, but still enjoyable and surprisingly relaxing. So one last tiny twig going into place and um, we are nearly done with the building. So I'm going to make a few adjustments with that last piece with my pokey stick because I don't want any more burned fingers. And there's the construction part of the fairy house finished and there's another beautiful transition. So off of camera I've added some, some more sturdy sticks along the sides of the roof and along the top of the roof just to give it some more definition, make it look a little bit more um, rustic. And now onto the painting that I teased you with earlier. So I'm cracking out my brand new set of Artes uh, acrylic paints. I've gone for the vintage colour selection here and um, we're going to try and make a nice olive green, a light olive green colour for the front door and the um, shutters. And now I do like new paints, no I love new paints. The only thing I hate about having new paints is having to peel off the, um, the circle bit over the opening, I just, I just want to get straight on in there. But they're open now and we're, we're mixing together the olive green and a white to make a, a nice pale olive green. So there we have the paint all mixed and um, ready for application. And I have to say this Arteza paint is beautiful to work with. It, it goes on lovely, it flows beautifully, it gives, it gives lovely coverage. Um, it's well worth it. So here we are painting the front door. Um, it's hard to get the crisp edges on that because um, there are no crisp edges on the back because we're dealing with a, natural, a naturally occurring material. So as I said, I'm going to paint the shutters this same green as well, touching up the door a little bit then, and the shutters on the other side just to, to give it a little bit of cohesion. Um, inside of the window, I'm going to paint a nice, um, a nice pale blue colour just to give the impression of, of glass maybe. I did get my dotting tools out because I thought this was going to be a little bit more fiddly than it actually was, but with a nice fine um, paintbrush I was managed, managed to get in all the little nooks and crannies. So to finish off um, my fairy house I've cracked out my beautiful Posca pens and I'm using a, a metallic gold just to give it um, 
a little door handle and um, a little letter box for any little tiny letters my fairy might get. So I'm thinking I'm going to uh, varnish this um, when the paint's all dried and when I finish building it, just to, to give it some super protection. And here it is, my finished fairy house, nestled in the garden, looking quite at home there. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you enjoy my videos, please uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video, and um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.